Today, I am sharing with you guys how to edit thumbnails just like Tom Noski or other big creators using these three simple techniques. Now, the first technique is just subject isolation. The second one is going to be using the dodge and burn tool. And then the last step really ties everything together. So be sure to watch till the end of the video. So without out of the way, let's go ahead and get straight into Adobe Photoshop. Now, this is today's thumbnail that we are going to recreate using this photo. Now, I picked this photo simply because it's a super clean image and it's pretty simple similar to this one right here. So I figured it'd be a great starting point. First things first, you guys want to go to file new and then make it 1280 by 720 P uh, sort of thumbnail. And you just go ahead and hit create. Now you have the proper sizing for a YouTube thumbnail. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to copy and paste this into our thumbnail area and just control C control V. That's how you do it. First step is subject isolation. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to control J. What that does, as you guys can see, is duplicate the layer. Now, if you have the brand new version of Photoshop, you see this little button select subject. It'll go ahead and select the subject for you. Honestly, nine times out of 10, this thing works, especially if you have good lighting. So create mask from selection. Now we have our subject isolated. Subject isolation is not just about separating it from the background. It's how do you actually make it separate from the background? So there's plenty of different ways you can make it separate. You can go over here to filter and blur the background. And just go to Gaussian blur and then just turn up the radius just like so. Another way you can go ahead and do that is by adding an adjustment layer. For an adjustment layer, I typically just like to throw the brightness down just a little bit, or you can do exposure as well. Just a simple tweak like that will help it out. So another way to isolate your subject is going to be color. I'm gonna go to filter, I'm gonna go to camera raw filter, and then we're gonna just turn the temperature down to a cooler sort of tone, just like so, make the background just a little bit cooler. And as you can see, it just adds a whole lot more sort of contrast between Tom Noski and the background. So that is the first sort of step to making a dope thumbnail. Honestly, you could post this as a thumbnail and literally Tom Noski did himself. And now for the second step, really just the building block of any sort of good thumbnail is using the dodge and burn tool. Now, before you guys click off, I'm gonna go ahead and add all the other fancy edits just like this. Uh, I just wanna really get you guys the basics down first and then we could add all of the extras. So the dodge and burn tool is over here. The dodge tool makes things brighter and it kind of adds a little bit more pop. What I really like to do is just add sort of a pop to sort of the glisten in the eyeball, just like so. And then maybe just to the white parts of the eye, just like that, just really, really loosely, just like so. Um, don't want to do too much, otherwise it will look unnatural. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop this out just a little bit more. And then honestly, I think this looks pretty solid. Uh, I can go ahead and just play with the highlights in his hair, make his hair just a little, look a little bit brighter, just a little bit cleaner. Maybe also right here, add a little bit of like kind of an edge light, just like so, just dragging my brush across the edge. Kind of just adds like a nice little like rim light. Honestly, just trying to recreate what's going on right here in this framing just artificially using the dodge tool. Now the burn tool, it uh, makes things darker. So if you wanna add some more contrast, say you wanted to make this side of his face darker, just go ahead, drag in like so, and you can see it is getting darker. Now, honestly, I don't really find myself using this tool a whole lot. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this part a little darker. Maybe this part right down here a little darker and then we'll call it a day. Sweet, so now that we have our subject looking pretty solid, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a quick little curves. I'm gonna bring this curves down right here. I'm also gonna bring this up just like so, just so we can get our scene popping a little bit more. Now, honestly, this is after and that's before, just a little bit of a pop in the highlights to me looks really good. So before moving into our third and final step for this YouTube tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and just add these sort of background elements. So that way we can then move on to our last and final step. So the way that I'm gonna go about doing so is, as you can see, the framing is a little bit off, a little bit different. So I'm gonna match this framing by moving Tom Noski over and then adding text and then adding these squiggly lines. I'm just gonna go ahead, select all of the layers, gonna hit Control T, and I'm gonna move this over just like so. And to me, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter, and then I'm gonna go over here to the bottom layer. I'm gonna in just select the dead space with this tool, Generative Fill, and Generative Fill does a really good job of just filling up the background, making it look seamless. Sweet, now this literally looks perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead, select both of these layers, gonna convert them to a smart object. So that way, if later we wanna change this little background, we can as well. So now let's go ahead and add the little squiggly lines. I'm gonna go over here to the color. I'm gonna start with the red one. And we're gonna go to the brush. We're gonna make the hardness 100. We're gonna turn the size down with using our bracket tools. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do something like, like this and then make like a point just like that. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing, but green. 
on a different layer. So hit plus, hit another layer. We're gonna make the same size stroke. And then we're gonna go ahead and just do something like this. Then same thing adjust it, make it bigger, make it look a little point. And then as you guys can see that there's a little bit of a glow in the original. So the way I'm gonna go ahead and do the glow is I'm also gonna add another layer. I'm gonna just make this brush bigger. I'm gonna turn the hardness down to 100, go to the flow and flow. Um, as you guys can see, that's like 100 flow. And then if we go down to like 9% flow, I just tapped it once. As you guys can see, the opacity almost is just like not as strong. So I'm gonna go to the flow. I'm gonna make it like 10%. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add it just like this to the actual thing. Maybe make it a little bit bigger like that and then do the same exact thing for the red one. Duplicate the layer. Now with Photoshop, the best thing to really do is keep everything separated so that way if you need to change things in the future, you have total complete creative control. So now we're getting actually very close. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna, for the lines, I'm gonna change the blend modes to, let's see what looks good. Honestly, hard mix looks pretty solid. So we'll do hard mix, that looks good to me. And then we'll add our text. So we'll do them, just go to the text tool, go ahead, use whatever font you like. You don't have to use the same exact one that Tom Noski used. I'm honestly not even using the same one, but we'll get a pretty similar result, so it doesn't even matter. So just like this, Control J to duplicate it and then bring it down and then we'll do U, just like that. Now these lines are a little bit, a little bit too far out. So we'll kind of do something like this, move this back just like so. And we'll also move this red line as well. So kind of like making sure we're doing something like this, which honestly that looks pretty killer. Now I am pretty happy with the results. Now it is finally time to reveal the third step. The third step is just adding matching lighting to your actual subject. As you guys can see, there is a green glow. There's a red glow. How are we gonna go ahead and match that? What you wanna do is you wanna go to add a layer. You wanna go to, um, let's just start with a red glow and then just fill up the entire screen. Uh, create a clipping mask. And the way you do that is just select right here in between the two, hold option. And this little sort of icon with the box will pop up and then you just click. And then you'll see it is only applying to Tom Noski. Now we wanna add a mask. This looks a lot more confusing than it really is. It's actually pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and just invert the mask. So make sure the mask is selected, invert it, make it black. So that way when we go with white sort of um, brush, we can just go ahead and brush like so. And then you can see down here, the white is being added just like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do something like this, kind of add that glow. And then you could even turn the opacity down just like that. And then you could even go as far as double clicking and then doing the underlying layer and then moving this up to where it's only affecting sort of the right sort of shades, right tones. And we want it to really affect the highlights. So let's go ahead and do that. And that is a pretty nice sort of fall off. If it looks too jaggedy, you kind of don't want that. But this fall off right here is looking pretty solid to me. So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna just remove this lighting from his fingers. Gonna hit, make sure the mask is selected when we mess with it. And then we're just gonna go to black, kind of get rid of this red glow on his fingers. Now this kind of uses a little bit of your creative sort of artistic brain. Really make sure that the lighting is where it is supposed to be. Otherwise it just will un look unnatural and you don't want that. So, so we got his fingers looking all good. That looks normal. And then maybe this is just a little bit too much red. So let's say you wanted to remove some more. Just go ahead, you can go just like so. Maybe we just want it on his shoulder, just like that. Cause honestly, it looks a lot more realistic. Now repeat the same exact process with the green. So to me, that's looking pretty good. We have a little bit of skin tones, but let's go ahead and fix that. The way we fix that is essentially just go to the mask and just remove it from his face. Cause it just does not need to be there. It just doesn't really look right. So now we're actually like working with something that looks pretty natural. Well guys, this is the end result here on screen. I honestly think we crushed it and I know that you can go ahead and start crushing your own YouTube thumbnails in the future. If you guys learned something new, please leave a like, comment, subscribe down below. If you wanna go ahead and continue learning all about content creation, click the video on screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, take action, take over. Peace out.